Hello, I'm Philip Stone. I'm here at Apex 2016 and I'm joined by Jeff Timms from ASM. Jeff, great to see you. Good to see you too, Phil. Last time I saw you, we were in Munich and there was a lot going on. I guess Absolutely. one of your main jobs here is to bring that to the American market. How's that been? No question. Well, you know, this, this is, I, I think, my 32nd year, I hate to admit, in this industry. Uh, but uh, uh, in all those years, I've never seen so much innovation brought to market in a single year. Ooh. And uh, I, think, I think it really comes back to the, the, the driving pillars of innovation uh, that become the backbone for everything we do as a company. So it's, it's removing uh, manual labor from the factory mm-hmm. floor, it's minimizing any uh, manual interventions, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's uh, improving robustness of systems, it's improving feedback loops, it's having software that all of a sudden is no longer intended to just control things but but monitor and take action with self correction yeah and and this this is really taking it to a new, a new level yeah and it resonates with what people are talking about at the moment with smart factory and sure. industry 4.0 iom whatever the term they right. they're using is of the stuff that you were you were seeing yourself at, at Productronica, what did, what were you excited about bringing specifically to the U.S. market and the America's market generally? Because you've got a lot going on in Mexico too. You know, uh, I think the, the the single biggest innovation that I'm I'm really uh, uh, excited about here is 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 the implementation and the integration of of SPI with a smart expert system mm-hmm. uh, and a and and, and a total machine controlling feedback loop yeah it, you know if you if you go back through history and you look at um, uh, all of the million dollar plus assembly lines that have been sold uh, into manufacturers around North and South America around the world for that matter how, e- virtually every one of those depended the performance of every one of those lines depended on somebody with a feel for yeah. setting up the solder paste setting up the screen printer and at the end of the day it's ludicrous to think you're in the high-tech industry, Ooh. in this high-tech industry, and all of a sudden you have to have somebody with a feel for something because they have they have that touch Ooh. to make the quality levels work correctly. Yeah. Yeah. So we looked at this and we said, you know, it doesn't make any sense for us to continue down that path. If you look at food and beverage or some of the uh, uh, chemical in- industries, anything falls out of a process window, even a fraction of a percent, Ooh. it's self-adjusted. Yeah. And it happens without anybody knowing it. That's where we are with this whole process lens and process expert. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that to me is really exciting. Yeah. Take the guesswork out of it. Yeah, and what, what's also interesting about that is that's a, a real life application that relates to your recent acquisition mm-hmm. of the deck business. So you're connecting between the printer right. and the placement machine. Are you, are you seeing more and more demand for those connections, not just there, but also further down the line? We hear lots about making the reflow oven smarter, those kind of things. Is that something that's in demand? It's inevitable. Yeah. Uh, whether it's in demand in a large way today or not, it's only a matter of time. Yeah. Because as, as you work down from beginning to end in the line, uh, one thing leads to another, and, and everybody's always looking for that elusive manufacturing edge, mm. right? And uh, it doesn't come by throwing people at it anymore. It comes by another layer of automation, another, another layer of intelligence, mm. uh, self, uh, uh, or actually self-decision-making machines. Yeah, yeah, and no, that's, that's the key, isn't it? It's those closed feedback loops, those what we're calling cyber-physical systems that are really going to benefit. Yes. And just briefly, the um, Mexican market, you've mm-hmm. been number one there for a while. Mm-hmm. How's that market going? Is it still growing? I spoke to still, a couple of growing. companies today. Yeah, I, I, I believe it is. Um, um, especially with the exchange rate the way it is. Mm. Uh, Actually, two markets were really big for us last year. One was Canada and one was Mexico. And uh, if you look at the exchange rate uh, fluctuation over the last 18 months, uh, that has quite a bit to do with it. If you look at the conversion cost between Mm. the U.S. manufacturer and what they can do in Mexico, it makes a lot of sense to move there. Yeah, okay. And that's that's great, great for the volume stuff. What's going on in Canada? Is it is that kind of high tech or there is a lot of high tech manufacturing in Canada. Um, it's a little lower volume, but a uh, tremendous amount of automotive. Mm-hmm. Trem- you know, anything with really stringent safety requirements, really stringent uh, process control requirements, mm-hmm. it's a good place for it. Yeah. A lot of great engineers that have been doing this a long time, they really know what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, and and you can trust the output of those of those factories. Yeah, and there's some creativity there, I guess you some bet. new stuff startups, that kind of thing. Well, exciting stuff on the boot, Jeff. I hope you have a great show and thanks for stopping by. Thank you, Phil.